So my one bit of advice when it comes to getting dye is get the dye more. This stuff's the powdered version of the regular stuff, but it doesn't work as well. This one is specifically for synthetics, including nylon, so that's your best bet. Trust me, I've used the liquid form of that. It doesn't work the same. Okay, so as you just saw in the video, I pretty much explained the differences between the two dyes. Obviously, you're going to want to use one that is designed for nylon. As I mentioned, you can use the other one, but I found the results to be iffy at best. So spend a few extra dollars to get the synthetic dye. It does not necessarily have to be RIT. There are quite a lot of other brands out there, but make sure it is specifically designed for synthetic materials so you can have a good experience. Okay, so for the dye mixture, I went ahead and used six cups of water to three tablespoons of dye. This is a lot thinner than what I normally run, but if I'm trying to dye something like black, well, I want that black to be as black as possible so that way I get some really deep, rich parts, not some funky, dark shade of purple or green like I've had happen in the past when I tried using the non-synthetic dyes. That being said though, the goal here is to kind of go for a caterpillar-ish yellow, but I figure you can always make the dye more concentrated. You can't exactly pull it out of the prints easily. So the next step is to wait literally for this pot to get near boiling. I really don't know how long this is gonna take. This is not exactly the world's strongest electric burner. So we'll see how that goes. Then hopefully once this gets hot, we'll then put the parts in there. The trick is you want the water to be not boiling, but not cold either. RIT recommends around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. So now the next step for this is we need to put the parts in there. Now you'll notice I have a pair of tongs here and I have a paper plate. Now ideally I would also have a container with cold water to rinse the prints off in. Um, I don't have that with me because access to running water out here at the side is a bit of a pain. But the point is, you do want to be able to rinse the parts off. I'm not too worried about that right now. Do note that it is pretty common for the prints to float on the surface, so I like to use a pair of these silicone tongs. I might go ahead and get another pair too because these look a little stained from the black, from all the black print, uh, dyeing I've been doing, but I'm not too worried about that. So let's plunk uh, the radiator and the hood in there as well. And, well, we're going to leave them to do what they do best, which is called soak. And depending upon the coloring that you want, I recommend pulling it out every 5 to 15 minutes to double check. Don't leave this unattended. There's quite a bit of foam on the surface already, and it's not uncommon for this to want to boil over and make an absolute mess, not to mention the danger of a boiling hot liquid. So that PSA aside, I'm going to let this sit, and I'll come back and talk to you in a bit. that out for a color scheme. That looks awesome. So I know the big question that a lot of people are going to be asking is, well, Calvin, why would I want to dye my prints versus paint them? The main reason being is dye will get into all the surfaces, including the inside. This has a see-through grill. I'm probably going to put some mesh behind it so you can't see the electronics that are hidden. But the advantage of dye is you can very easily, and when I say quickly, I'm using that as a relative term, because painting can take actually longer than people think. But it's a very efficient way, in my opinion, to color a bunch of parts very quickly. Here, let me actually pop down so y'all can see me again. But the advantage is for something like the underframe, which has a lot of surfaces that would be very hard to consistently color, dyeing it worked really well. The other advantage is dye chemically binds to the material and it actually, depending upon the process, how long you do it, all those various factors, it can actually penetrate 
relatively, when I say deep into the surface, I'm not talking like it's just on the surface. It can actually penetrate up to a couple of thousands of an inch minimum in there, especially if it's done in an industrial process. Sometimes you can cut a part in half and you'll actually see how far the die went in there. The obvious advantage of this is it's going to be a lot more durable of a finish versus painting it, which is just a surface treatment. Also, because the die does not add anything to the thickness of the material necessarily, it's not going to obliterate any details. A good example of that would be this, which is the Bodie California inspired boiler that I've done. And on that one, there's quite a lot of tiny details that could have been very easily covered over by paint, which were not done with the die. And also the inside had some details as well that would have been otherwise impossible to paint. So obviously there's a very good example of where dyeing things was actually more efficient. Now the other thing I will say is with dyeing things, you're pretty much going to give it one color. I, if you look around, there's probably people who have done masking methods. In my case, for these parts, one color is perfectly fine. I'm fine with that fact, and in a way it actually makes weathering easier because it gives me kind of a blank canvas to work off of. Now, the other thing I will say is if you don't want to dye things yourself, there are options. Some companies like Shapeways offer quite a few more color options. Do note that it does add to the cost and because of the finishing processes involved to lead up to dyeing, it might affect what prints you have that are doable. But quite honestly, it's not that hard to dye things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you have any questions about dyeing things, leave them in the comments down below, and I will do my best to try and explain them. And yes, one thing I didn't mention is if you're going to dye multi-jet fusion prints, yes, you can do it, although the only color you're going to get is black, but that's actually really good. I discovered that a couple days ago, so hey, that might come in handy for future projects. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to tap out here so I can let these parts dry and let the pot cool. See you here next time on Go With Gallery.